do do do. There we go. I can now be heard in the stream. Howdy, everyone. Um. Perfect. So I can now be heard in the stream. I think my levels are fine. I'm not picking up desktop audio. Um. Perfect. So, yeah, so this is a basic enough tutorial. I will be sharing my screen in Discord as well. Because it should be a smart idea to do. Left monitor. There we go. Um, so this is a basic enough tutorial. It will allow everyone to do the basics on setting this up. I know I gave an extra five minutes just to get, allow everyone to get um, both Ubuntu sorted and to get the... Uh, basics like my recommended client which is Bitvice, uh, or Bitvice SSH which is a brilliant tool um, for other people who like PuTTY they can of course use PuTTY and for other people who like their other clients or like to do it via a VM or whatever they so choose that's completely fine and uh, uh, it's just personal preference at that point so what are we going to be doing um, First and foremost, we are going to be setting up a VM. I'm going to be using VMware Pro. Uh, that's what I currently have installed. Alongside, of course, I have um, VirtualBox. So if anyone does have any issues with VMware Pro, I'll be happy enough to go off and do a separate one at one point or another. I know, Paddy, but it's absolutely horrible. It's horrendous. I don't like it, but um, of course, people do. So I always stick with what I prefer. So today we're going to be setting up one of these. It's a VMware server, uh, Ubuntu, not VMware server, it's a Ubuntu server in VMware. Um, as you can see here, I've set up the basics, so username, password, and that. Um, but I'll be starting from scratch, so everyone can follow along nice and happily, and I'll get started with a brand new version of Kelly. Um, is it going to allow me to start a uh, new virtual machine? So new virtual machine is how we start off. Then I've already got it selected on my desktop as the ISO file that I'm going to be using, which is the Ubuntu server uh, 20.0.4. So if anyone has any older ones, of course, you can always use them. Uh, but I recommend using the latest version just so you're compatible with what we're going to be doing today. I'm also just going to check that the stream can be seen yep um grand so this is the one i'm going to be using you do the same how you'd install a standard vm client on a server i'm also going to just open up my notes so i can read exactly how i set all this up uh, so first things first we'll use the iso file the name full name i'll just use my actual name how i set it up beforehand and then the username I'll be using is uh, so username I'll use Gman just because for simplicity's sake, and password I'll use Tor. Tor being the uh, standard enough password that most people get used to using because it's just the opposite of Roo. And of course I would use Roo, but if I try to demonstrate what happens. Uh, the name is already reserved by an, a part of the system, so you'll use Tor. Nope, sorry, not Tor, Gman, or whatever you so choose to use. Um, so as you can see, I've already got a server been set up before called Ubuntu 64-bit. That, that was my actual Ubuntu, so we'll call this the uh, stream VM. So, recommended size. Uh, 20 split it up into more multiple sides or store it as one file it's completely uh, preferential I, I know a lot of people do like to store into multiple files because of course you can drag and drop and choose and uh, pull files together into other VMs and other sections into other VMs and use them as you would I know a lot of people like to do that so customizing the hardware Depending on your system preference or your setup, of course, you can use whatever so format you like. I have 16 gigs of RAM in my computer and I have a 4-core 4 uh, 8-thread CPU. So, of course, I'm going to use 8 gigs of RAM just for um, 
preferential sake and for my CPU I'll be using four cores you can completely use whatever you so choose or you can like of course dial it back um, anyone who has virtualization open and I can have up to eight we call them logical processors I recommend using four just so you have no slowdown really and you can of course pick whatever you want I'll be using it on that type just because it's what I've been using in the past and it means of course you can do testing from other computers and um, log in and the rest I'm just going to leave it as it is uh, display for me will be will be the maximum display of one monitor because uh, of course I'm using two so I'll close that and we will finish that up and let the VM start after it takes a second and hopefully it doesn't crash, uh, crash this so there we go so this is where it begins I wouldn't be surprised. Live demos are always the um, the trickiest thing in the world to not have crash because, of course, they have the notorious case of just randomly crashing. So, so let the VM start up. Of course, I would have I would just have started from another one, but it's preferential just to use one as it's going. Um to start from scratch. So uh, some of the other key features on VMware which I more than likely won't use but I'll briefly talk over while this is all being set up in the background. So you have a, the ability to take snapshots of machines. So once the machine is set up or once it's set up to a level that you're so happy with, here's the SSH key that all logs in so you can see all the information and then of course it moves straight on to uh, this point here so you can pick whatever language you so choose so of course English because that's what language I speak um, oh is it not sharing my screen One minute. it should be sharing my screen There's a, is the VM not showing up for anyone? Oh, one minute. Stop sharing and I'll reshare. Screens, left monitor. Share. I can, I should be, I can see it on my own monitor being played back that it should be showing the device. I should be playing back. Yeah, I should be fine playing back now. I just reset it. Uh, so keyboard, of course, it auto detected. I'm using an American keyboard for this, um, which I'll leave it as is. I won't change it to an Irish just because I need my um. I need some of my slash keys. Um. Oh shit! The, on the stream. Derp. Whoops, I forgot to unmute, uh, unhide on the um, stream. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I was streaming in the Discord. Um, so there we go. Uh, everyone should now be able to see. Uh, so, more or less just going back then. Uh, English language, pick whatever language you so choose or whatever you so speak uh, natively so you can understand it a lot better if English is your first language. I do recommend using uh, English just because a lot more support is out there for it if like where um, certain objects might not be in the native language depending on how the developer sets certain things up it's completely optional uh, my keyboards US pick whatever keyboard is so set up on your laptop or desktop and then we'll move forward so we can see my uh, this is great on an internal network so I don't really care that much about it you can see it's on my gigabit controller so um, so no one really needs to worry too much. So it's set on the Ethernet and make a note of the 
IP address that you're going to use to uh, write down your um, which you're going to log in via your SSH at one point or another. So I'll take note of mine on my right monitor so I can log into mine at a later stage. So now I have that copied, I know I can move forward and I know that that's all ready to go. So proxy address, I've no proxy address. So I'll move forward again. And in the archive that I'll be using is the Ubuntu archive. So of course I'll move forward again. And then use the entire disk. Um, I won't change any of that just because this is just a basic setup. I don't really need to do any more complex stuff. So we'll move forward. And then we'll, uh, that's all fine. That's all ready to go. And we say yep and continue. So the name we're going to be using as I said before. Admin. Testing. Pick a username. Gman. And then choose a password. I'll use Tor and use Tor again. And then install OpenSSH. So this will allow you to SSH onto your server and allow password authentication over SSH. And then you can do whatever SSH kind of setup you want. For this, we'll just be using our passwords. So I know. Um, so whatever you set your password as Tor root, and you'll be able to well not root, but um, whatever you so set your password to and then you'll also be using your identity of what you log in with of course you can use the root password um, which is the password you use to create the account so which is the Tor in the VM um, so whichever one you so choose you can of course move on and use that so we'll move forward so I'm not going to install any of this because a lot of the stuff here isn't relevant of course you can Use stuff like Docker and all that, um, and PowerShell. But of course, we won't be using any of that today, and we'll just move forward without installing any additional um, stuff to the system. So we'll let that run. So while that's running, I will quickly just explain one uh, beneficial thing for people who haven't used it before. Wherever I've hidden it. Oh, yeah, it's on there. Windows client, that's why. Uh, GitHub. Just while that's all setting up in the background, GitHub is brilliant. Especially for second years and first years. If you're not using it, you should be using it. And even for third years who aren't using it, you should be using it. It's a great place to store your repositories of information that you're using. It's a great place to privatize work that you're currently working on and you want to contribute to. Uh, for projects, group projects especially, you have the ability to upload and pull down copies of work depending on what people decide to use. So I can demonstrate this by opening my GitHub client, which I actually thought I'd opened, but I must have forgotten to do it. Um, GitHub is fantastic. I don't currently have mine set up perfectly because as you can see, it's seven days ago. So it was literally just set up as testing just to push code and just to see how it worked. So you can see here, it shows you, I made two commits to two separate websites that I was working on. Uh, my repositories are lo located here. My followers are following whoever I decide to kind of review work or see work on. And it means I can um, do git clones, which you'll use in VMs to copy down files. So this is the, uh, this is GitHub as it's files built. It's brilliant. It's whichever one you want to go into. So if I want to go into my other one, the one that I'm not using, or the one I'm currently using. I said this is my open one. This is the one anyone can see. So if I uh, if I'm working on a project with people and I log off for the night, I'm able to currently fetch down all the original work or fetch whatever's been pushed to the repository by doing. I can do a where's the pull request? There it is. I can do a pull request so I can pull from a repository and get updates to my side and I can then see what updates have been pushed. Or I can do a push request pushing all the data I've done and any changes I've made to my own code. So this is very good for especially working with um, projects or maybe GitHub clones or whatever you so choose. Uh, pushing and pulling data using v uh, GitHub, absolutely fantastic. Definitely recommend it. And it's got built-in support for Visual Studio Code so you can just edit the code right on the system, push it, 
pull and just keep doing that. You've also got the ability to set up branches. So of course you've got your master branch, you could have your dev branch, you can have various amount of branches and allow um, merging of all that work together. Definitely recommend using GitHub, especially as students, um, and especially for group projects as students. It means you're constantly updating what work is out there and for employers, they're able to see what type of work you've worked on in the past, who you've worked with and what type of information you have actually worked on. So getting back to track while well, I was setting down the VM to work in the background, we'll move over to the stream VM. As you can see, it's still taking a while for my VM to load. Um, I don't know what hard drive it's on, so it um, could be on, take a little bit longer. So we'll have a look then at the, um, the SSH client. Hope he doesn't have the AM streaming at the same time. Uh, so yeah, so GitHub definitely recommend if you haven't if you need any if you have any more questions for me please ask and I'll definitely um, try and give a hand or explain a little bit further into what GitHub is and we can uh, basically break down I can break down the uh, necessary bits and pieces for it. so this is my SSH client it's Bitface it's absolutely brilliant in my opinion it has the ability to use SFTP uh, RDP, terminal access, SSH, and various other services. It's very lightweight and it's very, very fast. I used it when I was working on the Honeypop project uh, part time. I recommend it to a few of the people I know. Honestly, I definitely. In <laughs> Screens in Linux. Yeah, I definitely recommend I do use it on a regular basis especially for SSH and into systems you do have the ability to use like there is more and more abilities to set up on it you can create profiles you can do loads of different things I enjoy it a lot more than using um, putty now of course if you have your own Linux version go ahead and use Linux if you have a different version that you are so inclined to use go ahead and use this this is just one I recommend just for the simple fact that it opens both your SSH and your FTP and you can access everything all in one go and it's absolutely brilliant just so quick for doing work so let's see so we'll do a full reboot so ROM failed that's fine we we'll don't have any issues and we should be able to boot right in once it loads up so what we're gonna do now is once the system boots up we'll move into setting up a Apache server. This is what you'll have to do at some point or another, or it's the most basics of just setting up a web server. I have one set up in my own personal box, the one I run. They're super simple to set up, and most people understand how to use them. And like, once you understand that, you'll be able to proceed further with um, stuff like web servers and logins and stuff like that so uh, database is not so wait for that just to allow me access to the system nginx apache whichever really it is doesn't really matter it can just be whatever you so choose. Um, I'm just using Apache just because it's simple enough to install, especially for new people. Uh, this is the first time ever setting up a server. So this is the reason why I'm going to use um, Apache for. Of course, use Nginx if you so choose. I know it's built into applications like, um, uh, like Laragon. Wherever Laragon is sitting on my computer at the moment. I can't see it. Oh, there it is. Um, Laragon is a basic enough system. It allows you to boot into stuff like Apache, MySQL, Nginx, uh, MongoDB. It's great for just uh, development purposes, but as I said, personal preference. If you want to use Apache, go ahead, or XAMPP even, or WAMP, or whatever the version so suits your um, network. So. This is still setting up. It'd be a lot quicker, of course, if it was on an SSD, but I didn't put it on my M.2 just because there's not a lot of space left on it. So here we go. Here's the login. So I'll log in as my name, and I'll log in using my password. 
to give that a second to accept the password. Okay, so we can see our uh, IP address there. We can see our system load, our memory usage, and all of that. Um, is it? Okay, it's just kind of freaking out on me at the moment. That give me access to my root. As I said, online demonstrations never works out the first time, but it allows everyone to catch up at least. Um, okay. They never work. <laughs> well, mine didn't. <laughs> okay, here's the login system now. It was just being a bit weird. Um, there we go. So we use that. And then we use that. And there we go. There we go. Now I have access. Um, so for anyone who's never used Linux properly. Yeah, so it does sound like a me from every bloody time. So if you've never used Linux properly. Uh, how you do a super user command without being a super user. You use sudo. So how we're going to set up the Apache server is we're going to do sudo apt install apache 2 and then we'll have to type our password in and I will build the repository and you just say yes give it a second to build and pull down the repository of course everyone's network will vary so downloading it might take a split second longer than mine does but for the most part mine is fairly fast um, Streaming doesn't kind of help because I'm using up majority of my cores just to stream. So, uh, yeah. So, here we are. We are in alt cd into the root drive, which allows us now to see everything. So, I will then cd into the var drive and then ls that, and you'll see www, which is the standard. Oh, start uh, apt install Apache 2. So I will copy the command into chat for everyone, as long as it's not being slow. So I will screen that. You can see for a split second when I'm moving all my files over. So then sudo apt install Apache 2 and then just hit yes and then allow it to install so then after that you'll see the entire root using the cd slash that will allow you to see all your root files and then if you see the into your um sorry which one did i say it was it was the var drive and then uh then you'll see your www folder and if you see the into your www folder you'll see where your HTML file is stored. Well, your HTML folder, and then you just CD into that then. So it's a lot of CDing just to see one file. Bit of a nuisance. And especially if you want to then edit that file, it's even more of a nuisance. So this is where SSH comes in. Well, more importantly, uh, F SFTP. So this is where I'll minimize this for a second, and then we'll bring up our client here. And then we'll say, okay, well, we're going to type in our IP address. So everyone open up your SSH and type in the IP address to the box you're currently using. Then, of course, I'll use my Gman login. And then I'll hit login. And then it will ask me to accept the MD5 and all this. Now, of course, I'll burn this machine afterwards. So, um... No, really need to worry because I'm already set up with my other one. And then password, it's whatever password you so choose. Or will chose at the time. So then it will start to open everything up. And then, of course, there's no remote desktop to this machine. Just because there's no client set up. Uh, it's not a Windows machine. So I can close that. And now I have access to my SFTP. So... And without even having to touch anything, I now can go from that into that into that. And in two seconds, I'm in my index. So repeating everything I was doing with my CDs, I can go from var into www into, C, into HTML. 
in much quicker time and if I so choose I can now make a copy of it I can edit the file in a textpad document and I can now see all the information that would be on it and I can then control A copy it and then move it to another file or I can just do a straight download I can erase it I can calculate a hash in 512, 256, SHA 1, MD5, whatever it is. I can create a link to it. I can cut it, copy it, properties, and other such areas. Um, so it's fairly simple. So now that we see, we can actually access the index using an SFTP, as you can see up the top. Uh, we can move forward. So uh, for more preferential work, I will try and stick more to the command line now using SSH over using the VM box because of course with a VM box I can't scroll up or down um, using my scroll wheel where I prefer to do that with my client which I have my scroll bar on the right so all ls I can see I can see nothing at the moment so I'll cd into that grand so now that you have your SSH set up uh, we'll move a little bit further and we'll do some basics so I'll get people set up with um, maybe a basic Python script. Perfect time for uh, Microsoft Word to have a panic attack as I'm reading. Um, so first things first, we're going to set up using git clone. So more or less git clones are fairly simple. Um, so for this case I will be git cloning I know not everyone's favorite browser, but tough. It's the one I'm using just for this. Um, so I will use, good question. Which one was I using for this? I think it was John the Ripper. I'm not John the Ripper. Um, God damn it, I've forgotten which client I was using for my SSH. Oh, not SSH, my pull down. Um, God damn it. I had it wrote down as well. I must have removed it for some reason. I can't even think of it now. Uh, well, I guess I'm just going to have to do a quick search on my right monitor just to see what I did wrong. Uh, but for the most part, while everyone's getting set up, I will look up and see where I've uh, made my mistake randomly. And you, you'd believe I'd have all this set up, but sometimes it's just it just doesn't work like that. Um, but however, never. I guess I'll just have to do it out. So. Git clone is the command for normally doing it, so you can see all of the bits and pieces that are attached to it. So git, ho, uh, git clone and the repo itself. I can't think of the repo I was using for the demonstration purposes. It was based around searching up people's usernames, but I can't think of the name of the tool that does it now. Um, because I didn't write it down. Which is a mistake on my part. I do have it in my other VM, um, which I'm just going to quickly start. So I'll pause this VM for a second, suspend the guest, and I'll boot up the other VM. Small mistake, small undersight, but I uh, guess that kind of does happen from time to time where I forget exactly what I was using. Uh, it will come back to me the moment I see it as well. I did. It did now. Bloody hell! So um, yeah, it was Sherlock is the tool we're going to be using. So I'll give you the GitHub repository now. My apologies. I forgot my own um. I forgot my own repository, what repository I was using at the time, so. Uh, so you can kind of see the effect of trying to open two VMs at the same time. 
causes a little bit of slowdown on uh, the um, VMware and of course everything else at the same time but should be fine uh, so yeah, so Sherlock is the GitHub repository we're going to use. Sherlock is very, very simple. So you can see my Bitvice is actually closed down in the background now due to um, the VM being uh, sent to a suspended mode. So suspending a VM, of course, kills the connection to the server and prevents you from accessing it. So we'll go back over to this VM and we'll restore its machine state. This is a great feature built into mostly any VM you use, but you can have to save a machine state and reboot it from whatever you were using last. Uh, it does kind of put a tax on bringing it up and down because of course you have to give it more resources. So only kind of, um, don't open like nine or 10 uh, VMs at the same time and then suspend and reopen them all together because it can cause issues, e.g. crashing VMware. Even with a high-end PC, it can still cause issues. So. Once the VM restores, I will then make sure to uh, do a pull down of the GitHub. Uh, okay. So in chat now in a second, once I copy it up. And then that's the repository for GitHub. So there, we're back into the original state we were in. And then of course my VM, ha oh, my SSH client has stopped working since I'm no longer logged in. So I'll abort the SSH and I'll reconnect. As long as the IP address didn't change. And should the IP address shouldn't have changed. It seems to be struggling to connect. That's weird. Ah, oh, there we go. So it just took a second for the SSH to reset back up. So there we go. So now I'm back in again. So I'll CD back into my root drive. Uh, I'm now back onto the main page of where I was. So I'll continue on with what I was saying. Uh, so we're going to be using Sherlock. So how you do this is you do git clone and then paste it in. There we go. So I just see it did back out one and then redid it. It wouldn't do it into the root drive itself. So now it's going to quickly build the repository for GitHub, uh, for Git clone, allowing you to pull down the files and basically allow you to access any application that is on on GitHub. So a lot of uh, Linux tools are up there. So for CTF events and stuff, uh, GitHub clones, uh, GitHub tools are up and available to you. So via LS right now, we should see a folder for it unless it's in var. It moves it moves its folder for some reason all the time for me. Uh, on my other drive, it's on my main page, but um, uh, is it not? Oh, it's in the main drive. Um, so we'll see the end to Sherlock. And now we can see that we have our, our requirements.txt file. Best thing about this client is anything I hover over and select, it brings it right to a copy and paste to me. So I'd love to be able to run the application as it suggests from the website straight off the bat, but I'm missing a few things. 
So first things first, we'll do a sudo apt install and it will do python 3 dash pip and we'll do tor and we'll build the repository for this. So that's one of the things we need. So you need sudo apt install python uh, for slash oh, dash pip. So that's one thing you need. And while that's building away, uh, once that's available, we'll be able to install the requirements that set up in place for the clone. And then, of course, then we'll be able to run the program, as it says, on the main page of the Sherlock repository. And that is done simply by typing in the Python tree, Sherlock, and then the username. So there we go. So then we'll do Python python3 dash m pip install sorry sorry should be sudo python3 tech m install dash or uh, requirements.txt and then do that should have worked yeah that normally works uh, unless it's just not requiring me to do it this time around which isn't shouldn't be the case yep that's the exact command I used last time around as if I do that again Okay, never mind. I guess it just didn't want to work. That's the command there. I'm actually worried about what command I actually see. What did I actually type? Oh, I, I literally look completely over the pip. Lol. Yep, I didn't even notice that. Um, so now that that's in place, we can go ls again, and we can do Python 3, Sherlock, and then we use, let's just say, my one of my usernames. And then we can see all the usernames that pop up. So, great little tool. Great for um, programs. So a lot of the stuff doesn't actually exist. So you get a lot of false positives. But once in a blue moon, you'll get positives. Minecraft is on there. And that is the actual account I play on. Because I have test checked that one myself. So uh, one of the reasons I prefer using SSH over using the client itself. Is because we can actually scroll up and down. And see what uh, we can see. So YouTube, that's correct. Twitch, that's probably correct. Um, TikTok, nope, that doesn't exist. Scratch, nope, that doesn't exist. Roblox, no, that doesn't exist. Raid forms, nope, that doesn't exist. Uh, Minecraft, that exists. Meet me, that's a constant false, po false positive. Investing, uh, false positive again. Uh, Fortnite tracker, false positive again. And you can kind of see the other ones don't show up. So it's uh, hack the box is there as well. So you can actually have a look and see if the person's on the hack the box. I don't know what my account is. Um, but yeah, you can see that there's a load of uh, tools there. A lot of names that pop up. Oh, Twitch died? That's weird. Uh, 